By mid-December 1944, the Allied forces have the German army on its heels. The 761st is preparing its attack on the Siegfried Line when they receive a sudden change of orders. Proceed immediately to the Ardennes Forest in Belgium. At that time, the 761st Tank Battalion was resting and refitting at Saar Union. They were alerted to the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge and were ordered to march northward to the southern tip of the Bulge. December 16th, 1944, at 5.30 AM, the Germans launched the Battle of the Bulge, and they get like eight days of night fog and snow where Allied aircraft can't fly. Hitler comes up with this idea, I'm going to take my last reserve of tanks. Hitler's going to throw them all into this last ditch offensive through the Ardennes forest. And he's going to retake Antwerp and close it so they can't supply themselves there. The Battle of the Bolt was Hitler's attempt to split Allied forces. And so you have the Netherlands, Belgium, He's coming out of Germany, and he's pushing towards the port of Antwerp. One of the great kind of failures of the Allies after D-Day was to secure these ports in sufficient quantity to supply their field armies. And the one they really need in the north is, is Antwerp. Antwerp is this big, bustling port fed by the Scheldt estuary, where you, know, you can land a lot of stuff on its wharves and then convey it quickly to the Allied armies in the northern sector of this western front. When the Germans launched this offensive, the Americans were caught completely off guard, and it put them into a panic. Nobody had any suspicion that the Battle of the Bulge was going to happen. Nobody thinks Hitler's going to launch an offensive. And what you know, allies do is they rush reinforcements in. The 761st were not part of a division. They were attached to infantry divisions that had little or no armor. And so they were up for grabs. They were known as you know, one of the bastard outfits because it was passed between eight different divisions and just slotted in wherever it was needed. So this is why it has 183 days in the European theater, because it's just being sent wherever it's needed, like a fire brigade. On Christmas Eve, the 761st arrived in the area of the Bulge. They had seen the worst of the German army. And even though they had only been in combat for a little over a month, were really veteran soldiers. They send a 761st tank battalion into the key crossroads of Bastogne, a place where all roads that go through the Ardennes converge. The 761st plays a critical role in that it fights this battle of TA. TA is this little town west of Bastogne. Their objective was to take the town of Tillet. Why? because Tillet had several good intersecting roads, and that's good for the passage of armor. The Germans were using that to resupply troops that were in and around Bastogne. And so the 761st was sent there to kick them out of Tillet. By taking TA, they can no longer supply these advanced panzer units. And then you kind of can turn back in and lift this siege of Bastogne. Several days, the 761st scrapped inch by inch over this frozen ground, horrible terrain. Supplies are low, food is low. These men are cold, these men are hungry, but they're not giving up. We were rolling through, going forward, shooting, and through my periscope, I could see these bodies laying on the road in front of us. And all of a sudden, we heard over the radio, we had the Germans hit the first tank, the last tank, and it would save the Germans all over the place. So we backed up, ran around to the back of the town, and we laid nothing but fire on them, 50 caliber, 30 caliber, and 76 millimeter. All hell broke when they fired a HE shell to hit. Sometime after dark, when I came to, out in the ditch, next to my tank, burning like hell. They were able to cut off the supply lines. You can't get fuel, you can't get ammo, you can't get food. And once they were able to do that, it's, it's, it's done. You literally see the Germans who went into this battle with just five days of gasoline. 
in their tanks. And they're out of gas, so they just get out of their tanks in the middle of Belgium and start walking back to Germany because the Third Army has basically hit them in the flank and stopped the, the, the siege of Bastogne. By December of 44, the Germans were in a vice. That vice had two parts. One part was closing from the east, that was the Russians. And the other part, the Allies closing from the west, the British and the Americans. And they gradually squeezed the Germans. When I pulled my helmet off of my head, I, I felt a sharp pain because the shrapnel had lodged in my head, in, halfway in the helmet and threw into my skull. This uh, young white fellow who was in the infantry, he uh, grabbed a hold of my helmet for me and he thought that we were evacuated together. And uh, this is sort of odd, you know, here's a white soldier uh, looking out for his black combat companion. T.A. passed into history and became another town that was only a shambles after the battle had passed and smoking shells had ceased to blast. It was just another dead town where a hard battle had been fought. Well, as a Bastrop Battalion, there are challenges but opportunities associated with the way that they're being utilized by Patton. The challenges are obvious. They are not going to be recognized all the time for what they're contributing as a unit. But because they are an armored division, that armor is a buffer in some sense against the discrimination they might have faced had they been standing shoulder to shoulder with their countrymen in other forms. And so they're able to build that trust based on their performance, but also a degree of anonymity. No one knows who's in those tanks in the heat of battle. But afterward, there's this recognition that without those men, all could have been lost. On March 21st, 1945, Supreme Allied Commander Dwight David Eisenhower commissions Task Force Rhine to be under the charge of Lieutenant Colonel Paul Bate, who's now recovered from his injuries. It's going to include the 761st and the 409 Infantry. Their orders are both ambitious and specific. Break through the Siegfried Line and advance to the Rhine River. Task Force Rhine was really the end game of World War II. Of course, by that time, the Battle of the Bulge was over. The Battle of the Bulge was Hitler's so-called last gamble in the West. And Task Force Rhine was just the beginning of the end. One of the Germany's great vulnerabilities is the Rhineland, where so much German industry is concentrated in this area. So the Siegfried Line was 400 miles long, and it was intended to secure the Rhineland. And about 18,000 interlocking bunkers and pillboxes connected by tunnels and roads and lots of infantry. So there was not an inch of ground that invading force could cross where they would not be hit by German machine guns and artillery. It was as nasty to a service member as you could imagine. You have mines, tank killers, and you have these pyramid triangles called dragon's teeth to slow down the advancement of the tanks so that they could be killed. You also have artillery, and you're getting rained on by high explosives. By this stage of the war, with the German army so worn down by constant combat on the Eastern Front and on this Western Front, the Germans just don't have the troops and the artillery and machine guns to man all the positions of the Siegfried Line. Those that are manned are dealt with just brutally by the Allies as they roll forward. They basically have flamethrower tanks. These will be like Sherman tanks equipped with a nozzle that will fire jelly gasoline napalm into the gun slits of these Siegfried Line force. The very place designed to keep tanks out, the 761st, is going through. Now you have infantry going across the Siegfried Line, led by black troops into Germany. We started with zero trust. They've now built up trust to where, as a white service member, I'll go with this black driver from South Carolina, and I trust him with my life because I've seen them in battle. And we're both going into Germany. That is the epitome of trust on the battlefield. 